In this video, we're going to work together to build a template for conducting hypothesis tests uh, regarding hypothesized values of the population proportion. Now, this template is only appropriate in cases where the sampling distribution of the sample proportion can be approximated with a normal distribution. Um, this is a little engine we're going to put together to determine whether or not we can proceed. And in order for us to proceed, we have to meet both condition one and condition two. Um, we will type in these conditions as if functions. Um, it, it helps to have a hypothetical in mind. So suppose we have a random sample of 50 observations that resulted in 10 uh, yeses or 10 responses of interest. Uh, let's go through the conditions and we'll see if they're met. So the first condition, again I'll use an if function, the first condition is that we must have uh, x greater than 5. So if our yes count is greater than 5, this will return a 1, it will return a 0 otherwise. The second condition is that the sample size minus the yes count must also be greater than 5. So equals if sample size minus yes count greater than 5 will return a 1. If it is not greater than 5, then it will return a 0. So as you can see, both the conditions are met in our hypothetical. Now, is the sampling distribution of the sample proportion approximately normally distributed? In order for that to be a yes, we have to have met both of these conditions. And so our decision down here will be made by the product of these two answers. So walking through this, we really have three different possible outcomes. The first possible outcome is that condition one is not met, in which case one times zero is zero, which puts us at a no. The second possible outcome is that condition two is not met, uh, which puts us at a one times a zero, which is zero. Again, we end up with no. Uh, Another condition under the no side is that neither condition is met. Small sample size, for example. Once again, zero times zero gets us a no. Now, the only condition that will lead to a yes, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion is approximately normal, continue using the template, is when we have met both condition one and condition two. One times one equals one, uh, and we will get the yes response. In this case, we have the yes response. Both the check marks and the, the um, green coloring here are due to conditional formatting. So let's try some other circumstances. What if a yes response was very rare? As you can see in this case, we fail to meet condition one and um, it's not appropriate to use this template. What if instead a yes response was very, very common? and this was 49. In this case, we've met condition one, we have not met condition two, still we are unable to proceed. Um, so a moderate yes response with a decent sample size permits us to use the template. So now let's work through an example. Uh, for this example, I'm going to grab an Excel file. This Excel file has the results of a survey asking people around campus whether or not they were afraid to walk alone on campus after dark. A one being a yes response. So we're going to work with this data in order to fill out the template and we'll build our calculations as we go. So I'm hitting window left and for the template once clicking on after clicking on the template I'll hit window right and we're going to work through this. So the first thing we need is the yes count sample size and sample proportion um, because this is a zero one 
Uh, we can get all of those with descriptive statistics, going to data and data analysis. If you do not have the data analysis button under data, you can watch the video attached to the link that's popping up and, and learn how to add that to your software. So after we have under the data menu clicked on data analysis, we will choose descriptive statistics and we will highlight our data and our labels. In order to do that, I'm clicking on the label and hitting control and shift at the same time and hitting down. Um, we're indicating that we have put our label in the first row and that we want our results in a new worksheet. Also, we are asking for summary statistics. Now the mean of a 0, 1 variable is the same as a sample proportion. Um, we can see here that we have a count of 127 and a sum of 31. So I will go ahead and use those, our sample size of 127 and our sum of 34 is our yes count. Our proportion will equal yeses divided by our sample size. And as you can see, we get the same result as the software got for the mean of that 0, 1 variable. In any test, we'll need to specify an alpha, which indicates how sure we want to be. The most common alpha is 0 0.05, which means that you will be 95% confident of your result. For a hypothetical population proportion, in this case, we will use 30% or 0.3. Now we need the standard error of the sample proportion. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and maximize since we're done with the sample data. The standard error of the sample proportion is equal to double parentheses, the hypothetical population proportion times 1 minus the hypothetical population proportion divided by the sample size. And then we need to take the square root of the whole thing. I prefer to raise it to the power of 0.5, but you could also use the square root function. And so the result we get for the standard error of the sample proportion in this case is 0 0.0407. Now for our z-test, we simply need to standardize our sample proportion, which has been confirmed to be distributed approximately normally. So equals. We will start with something that is normally distributed, which is the sample proportion. We will shift it to the left by its own mean. And then we will rescale it using its own standard error. And in this case, we end up with a z-test of negative 0.7939. Now, in order for us to know whether or not the z-test is extreme or not, we need some standard to hold that test up against. So we will use our critical values to do that. The critical value is going to be a function of whether or not we're dealing with a left tail, two tail, or right tail test and also alpha. So in the case of a left tail test, z critical will be the z value for which alpha percent of the values fall to the left of that z value. In order to get that, we will use norm.s for standard inverse. Inverse indicates that we are going from the probability to the z value. And it's asking for the probability. By default, this function gives you the, pro the z value such that the probability to the left is 0 0.05 in this case. And we get the common z value of negative 1.645. Because the z distribution is normally distributed around 0, we can find the right tail version of this critical value, or in other words, the z value for which 0 0.05 
or 5% of the outcomes fall to the right of the z-value simply by taking the negative of the above. So 5% uh, of z-values fall to the right to the right of 1.645 and 5% of z-values fall to the left of negative 1.645. Finally, for a two-tailed test, in the case of a two-tailed test, we need to proceed the same as we did for the left-tailed test using our function norm.s.inverse, but in this case, the appropriate area is half of alpha. because we are looking at, um, in the case of a two-tailed hypothesis, where the null is that the population proportion is equal to, in this case, 30, and the alternative is that the population proportion is not equal to 30, results that are extreme either uh, on the high side or the low side, in either case, extreme results will result in rejection of the null. So we split alpha, half of the rejection region will be on the left and half of the rejection region will be on the right. Once again, using the fact that z is normally distributed about zero, we can simply take the negative of our first finding. So one way that we can decide in this case whether or not to reject the null is by comparing z test to our critical values. In order to reject in any case, z test is going to have to be more extreme than our critical values. So in the case of a left tail test, Z test will need to be more negative or less than negative 1.645. In this case, it is not. In the case of a right tail test, in order to reject the null hypothesis, Z test will need to be greater than 1.645. It is not. And in the case of a two tailed test, in order to reject the null hypothesis, Z test will need to be more extreme than 1.96, that is either less than negative 1.96 or greater than positive 1.96 uh, with the given alpha. And once again, this is a very moderate z-score or z-test, so we will not be rejecting. There is another way to proceed. Um, and that is, there is another way to come to a conclusion to either reject or to fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is by looking at the p-value. The p-value is very similar to alpha, except it is related to our z-test rather than z-critical. So alpha is the area to the left of z-critical for a left-tailed test, and the p-value will be the area to the left of z-test for a left tail test. To find this, we will use the function norm.s.dist, which by default gives the area to the left. We will input z, and we will indicate true for cumulative, meaning we're looking for the area to the left of negative 0.7937 under the standard normal distribution. In every case, we will only be able to reject in cases where the p-value is less than alpha. As you can see, this large p-value does not lend itself to rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, to find the p-value for a right-tailed test, just as alpha is the area to the right of 1.645, we will need the area to the right of z-test or the area under the standard normal distribution that is to the right of negative 0.7937 this is the area to the left of negative 0.7937. So to find the, the area to the right, we simply need to take the whole area under the curve, or 1 minus the above. And once again, we have a very large p-value, which does not lend itself to rejecting the null hypothesis. Finally, for the two-tailed test, um, we will need to pick the minimum of the two areas above. And in order to highlight those two, I'm just using my arrows and the shift key. You can also use your mouse. And then we will multiply the minimum of the two areas by two. And what this does is it will give you either, as in this case, the area to the left of negative 
9 times 2, or if z-test happened to be positive, it would give you the area to the right of positive z-test times 2. And in any case, it will give you the appropriate p-value. And once again, for a third time, we have had a large p-value, which means that we will not be able to reject the null in any of these three tests, a left tail test, which would be attempting to prove that the population proportion was less, less than 0.3, a right tail test, would, which would be attempting to prove that the population proportion was greater than 0.3, or a two tail test, which would be attempting to prove that the population proportion was not equal to 0.3. So in other words, our results are for the sample proportion was just far too close to our hypothesized population proportion to be able to reject the null in any of our cases. There is a clear form button, which you can use to reset the form in order to proceed to another problem. If you'd like to see how to add a clear form button, simply click on the link that is appearing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.